Welcome back, folks, to some more Icewind Dale. We'll be doing Trials of the Lure Master, but first, I've had a few people, including Gaia Gaia, or however you say your name, uh, ask me how come I didn't do the full dialogue with uh, Mr. Big Badass Great wor White Worm at the end of Heart of Winter. Uh, well, the reason and the answer is simple, because I was already running very late for a party that I was supposed to be at for Cinco de Mayo, and uh, <laughs> honestly, at that point, I needed to get my ass out the door. Then, of course, the game locks up after I defeat her, and I have to do it all over again, and I at least had to get the video uploaded. So, we'll go ahead and do the full uh, dialogue conversation with her now before we start the trials. So, you dare to follow me here. I think you will find that to be a fatal mistake. Fatal only to you is Karab. Spoken like a true hero. Shall we put those words to the test? Wait. I'm curious. Returning here made it easy to find you. Why did you do it? I feared as much, but I had little choice. It was a calculated risk. To what end? To cheat death itself. To be born anew, as you see me now. Only by returning here could I do this. Turn into a big ugly bitch of a dragon. Interesting. Why did you need to return here? When I built this lair, I included two special wards. One would serve as a beacon that would allow my spirit to find its way here upon my death. And the other would preserve a body almost indefinitely. I then reared two offspring, devoid of their spirits, and placed their bodies in the preservation wards. The plan was simple. If I were to die, my spirit would return here and find a new body in which to live again. How did you rear young with no spirits? While their flesh was yet unformed, I warded the eggs so that no spirit could find a home within them. That's a really fucked up thing to do to your own offspring, this Karat. Would you rather I had bore them normally and then stripped their spirits from them? No. By doing what I did, they were nothing more than empty shells, ready for use. That does not make it right. Unfortunately, their father felt as you do and objected to my plan. Had he agreed to it, he could have shared immortality with me. I take it that's his skeleton in the field of bones. Yes, he attacked me and had to be slain. I regret... But it had to be. Let me ask you something else. Why do you hate the Ten Towns so much? Ages ago, dragonkind roamed Faerun freely. Then the civilized races came to power and began to encroach upon our lands. Bloody wars were fought in which your kind launched entire armies upon us. Against such numbers, even we soon fell. You really need to lay up the cigarettes. Now we are solitary creatures who hide in caves in faraway lands. We fear sleep, for it is often the sleep of death. What the we hell does this have to do with the ten towns? I was slain fighting for my homeland against an invading army. Ionan. A man of the Ten Towns wielded the blade that broke my heart. Yes, I have that here in my pocket. An invading army? History paints a different picture, is correct? Yes, and history is written by the victors, as they say. It is also said that history repeats itself. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Look at the plight of the barbarians. Even now, they are being driven from their lands by the Ten Towns. Soon they will be left with two choices, extinction or absorption. They are a proud people and will not bend. They will choose extinction. 
an entire culture will vanish, lost forever, all in the name of civilization, just as my culture has been lost. I find it hard to believe that you are doing this out of altruism. When I awakened from my sleep, I looked upon the world anew, and I was shocked to see how little had changed. My lands were still in the hands of the Ten Towns. The plight of the barbarians had not changed at all. I saw a kindred spirit in Wolfdane, so I joined with him to end this tragedy once and for all. Tell me something else. You were slain almost a century ago. It didn't take so long for you to awaken. The sword of Ionan had a special enchantment, almost an intelligence of its own. When the fatal blow was struck, it somehow knew that I would be born anew. The blade broke, sacrificing itself that I might be trapped. My spirit lay within my shattered heart at the bottom of Lac Dinishir. I can only guess that the blade was removed, allowing my spirit to go free. I now hold the sword of Ionan. It has been forged anew and now sings with a life of its own. Yes, I sensed the blade when you first entered here and was concerned. However, I now see that the original enchantment was not restored. It is of no consequence. Yes, correct. I'd rather we came to some sort of agreement than fight. Can we perhaps have human and dragon sex to settle this? Never. My heart was shattered long ago, and all Find mercy it. bled from the wound. I lost my love, my life, and my kingdom. I shall reclaim it all, or I will pass into oblivion like most of my kind. Draw your blade. Let us end this now. I will feed you my cock dragon. Let's end this. All right. So that is the entire dialogue with his Karak. Let's go ahead and start Trials of the Lord Master. We've already seen me kill this bitch twice anyways. Welcome, folks, to Trials of the Lord Master. Now, before we begin, I'm going to explain to you what's going on here. You'll notice the party has changed. After several moments of thinking about it, I decided that we were going to do a party change. Uh, we are going to be keeping Ronstock as our main character, and I have written a little backstory for why there is this potty change and what has happened to Ronstock since the uh, the last mission, uh, saving Icewind Dale from the evil Great Worm, is Karak. Now, before we begin, I did have to use the uh, Dale Keeper editor because what happens is if you try to create a new expansion game with evil characters, which is what we're doing here, is an evil character campaign. Uh, they're all going to start out level 1, and we're not fucking having that. So I went ahead and gave everyone the 2.5 million experience points that they had at the end of the last game, and they automatically bounced up to their appropriate levels. Uh, Ronstock was a paladin. He is no longer. He's become a fighter. And we will go over uh, what has happened and transcended since the uh, last one. Now, it did take me some time to write this, and uh, when I was writing it, a lot of the game started freezing and blah blah blah, and it, like it took for fucking ever because it just wasn't typing smoothly and flawlessly as it should have. So there's probably mad typos in here. I do apologize. Uh, you'll notice Ronstock has nothing. Uh, the other thing is we've lost all our inventory since we're new with a new party now. I went ahead and gave some basic magical equipment or some good magical equipment since we did end the last game with good magical equipment. But as you can see, everyone is kind of lost everything else. I just gave them a weapon and some good armor to get them started. Uh, so the, the Trials of the Lure Master expansion shouldn't be too uh, difficult on normal difficulty. We're probably a little overpowered as it is, so I didn't uh, get too crazy with the magical weapons. Uh, but as you can see, Ronstock is bare naked. I have written a biography for him, and we'll go over what's happened. He has kept his last remaining stats. You'll notice now he's a human, lawful evil fighter. Hmm, so what could have possibly happened for such a change to turn Ronstock the Paladin into 
Ronstock the Ravager. Well, I'll tell you. Gather around the fire, children, and listen to my tale. Ronstock was once a formal paladin, and a glorious one at that. After saving Icewind Dale from the hands of Belefet and the evil bitch of a dragon Iskarat, he returned to his hometown, a small fishing village called Runesgard, a bit south of the wintry north. Here much had changed due to the chaos that bled from the north and whose ice touched trickled into the southlands. The village was now overrun with evil, thieves, murderers, rapists, and Americans. He learned his sister Rowena had been abducted by a local band of thugs who repeatedly raped her, mostly with their weapons, on a mead-covered table at the local tavern, the Lucky Wench. Maybe it's time for a name change. Ronstock followed the local rumors until he found a small encampment where the murderous dogs hid from the light of the good gods. Deep within a cave he found them sleeping, but even his faith could not quench his anger. A small steel cage housed the whimpering of a decrepit creature, none other than his sister. Hunched into a slimy ball of piss, spit, and blood, she cowered like a were-rat in her own feces. A roar unlike any other emitted from the new abyss of Ronstock's heart. The five men awoke, startled from their dreams of evil glory. As they came to arms, they saw before them a paladin bathed in a luminescence and donning blood-red armor. The sight turned their dark blood pale with fear, but that was the last thing they would ever see. By the time the five men had come to their fighting sense, a hold spell person kept them all tightly bound. And after the sight of his near-dead sister, Ronstock's faith had fled him. Rage is all the paladin knew now. He dropped his holy blade, pale justice, and drew forth a black dagger dripping with acidic venom. He had found this evil weapon to the ghastly to behold once. Now a smile crept across his grim lips, and he curled his fingers tight around its grip. Approaching the first man, he began to cut strips of flesh from the man's face. Although the man could not move or speak, he could breathe and feel. The searing agony told of the horrors from the man's lips, but only silence escaped. The man's faith was all, face was all but muscle, tissue, and bone, but not before the crazed paladin hauled the man's body to a still blazing embers of their fire and buried his face within the fiery embrace. Ronstock hurried to the next man. He knew this spell wouldn't hold this man forever, but it still held, for their will had been broken. A hot cauldron boiling with the flesh and meat of many creatures hovered above the pit fire these men had prepared. The contents were unrecognizable, but the bubbling, steaming surface of the meat stew was the paladin's only concern. He hoisted the second man up by his ankles and dipped him face first into the giant cast iron pot. The man's face quickly melted off, and now his meat too was added to the carnivorous concoction. By now, blood rage had taken control of Ronstock's will. The third man was quickly decapitated, his head rolled into the shadow somewhere in the cave. The fourth man lost his legs and arms, and before he bled to death, Ronstock plunged a black dagger deep within the man's esophagus, so deep that the blade's tip tickled his inner torso. Now the hold spell had worn off, and before he could reach the last man, the leader of the look by the leader by the look of gaudy jewelry, the thug had scuttled over to a small cage, entrapping his beloved sister. Behind the man, a large cavernous lake loomed into a larger open space where the cave opened wide like a Tarasque maw. Ronstock charged wildly at the man, but not before the small-cocked bastard dragged the cage to the edge of the lake and kicked it in. His trapped sister sank like a stone to the icy depths. Seeing this was more than the paladin heart, mind, and soul could take. He was now internally broken. His faith in gods would fall forever. His hands plunged deep into the man's eye sockets. Once his grip had formed, the rage took hold. Ronstock literally ripped the man's skull in two, shards of skull spattering nearby walls. He quickly tossed down his armor and dove into the cold clutches of the lake. Twenty feet down he went and clutched the steel cage that had lodged itself in a bed of large rocks at the bottom. No matter what rage was left in him, he could not loosen its hold. One last bubbled scream of terror escaped his sister's mouth before she inhaled two lungs full of icy depth. Ronstock looked one last time at her once beautiful face, now marred with cuts, burns, and bruises. His tears went unnoticed as they fled into the chill water around them. He swam to the top and took in the breathable air around him. Ronstock left that cave with no armor, nor no sword of justice, 
no spirit and no soul. His pure heart was now black with hate. His gods had taken the last thing he loved on Faerun. They had forsaken him, and now he would forsake them back. The rage had left him, but the evil of the dagger, once held in embrace, had corrupted his heart. Although the lawfulness and structure of his mind was intact, the good that once resided there had been twisted into an unthinkable evil. This evil would be spread unto the lands, and be feared by all who heard its name. Ronstock, the Ravager. So that's my badass motherfucking biography that I wrote for L. Ron Stockio here. Um, maybe I'll get around to the other characters, maybe not. Depends how bored I get. So let's go over the new parties. What had happened was, on his way back to Lonelywood, Ronstock came upon five adventurers. They looked well armed, and now that he was pretty much stark naked, and was also lost of all will, he decided not to attack them. Instead, they got to talking, and they decided that since he seemed to be of evil intent, as they were at this point, they would take him in, and shelter him, and protect him, until he finally got his will back, and the fire was relit in his eyes. So now joining Ronsock the Ravager, we have Lug Lug, the half-giant! Yes, folks, Lug Lug is back. We gave him a little boost to his strength and constitution to reflect the Lug Lugness. And, of course, dumped him down a bit. Lug Lug is a level 18 fighter. He comes equipped with a Helm of Shouting. Black Swam armor. A large shield of plus one strength, which gives him to the 22 strength. He has the Girdle of Labelis, which gives him free action as long as he wears it. He also is donning Gauntlets of Weapon Expertise and the Stomper Boots which allow him to cast Earthquake once per day. He's wielding the Axe of the Minotaur Lord. It's a fine weapon that once belonged to the Minotaur Lord in the Luremaster Catacombs. The Axe sports a double blade mounted of solid oak shaft. It's a finely balanced and may be used one-handed. The Axe is enchanted, giving the user plus four to hit and damage. I don't think you actually get this until the trials, but since I've sacrificed so much of my magical shit to make this party, I decided to give Lug Lug that Axe. Fuck you if you don't like it. He also has the Hell Pick, which is his trusted 1d4 plus 4 crushing warhammer of death dealing doomness. Sporting 162 hit points, he can kick your daddy's ass. Next we have Not Twat, Kumquat. She is our gnome, Fighter Thief. And yes, I know that name is fucking hilarious. Of course it is. I fucking made it up. That's Not Twat, Kumquat. She is a fighter thief, 18, 18, 18s down the board, 120 hit points, minus 4 armor class. She is wearing plus 4 shadowed leather, wielding a plus 1 large seal of missile detection, and using a plus 4 action longsword. And she also has Jameson Sling, which I just bought at the tavern here for her. Next we have Contagion, the cleric. He's an evil cleric, obviously. He is wearing Elven Chainmail of the Hand, plus three, a plus one large shield, plus four versus missiles. He has the Morningstar Defender. He found it on a dead cleric named Clock, and after he continued to smash her face in and drink her blood, he took her weapon. And he also is wielding the Giant Killer. I gave him a couple plus two bullets as well. Next we have Juju Bum Bum. He is a African druid. Now, since there is no Africa, he's just going to be our black druid. Uh, but as you can see, he's got the war paint and the little bongo drums and all that good shit. 10 strength, 16 dex, 16 constitution, 13 wisdom, 18 charisma. Charisma is the, the druid statistic. He's also adept with spears, so he has the spear of Koresh. A 1d8 plus 3 spear that gives him 10% fire resistance and a 5% chance to do 1d6 cold damage. He also has a plus 1 sling with some bullets. He is wearing Umber Hulk plate, which is one of the few uh, plateish type armors that druids can wear. They have to wear natural armors made from wood or animal hide. Last but not least, we have Black Lotus. No, I did not name her after the magic card. I just like the flower, okay? She is a drow mage. Uh, now, you can't make a specific drow 
uh, race in the Icewind Dale. But she's fucking drow, okay? She grew up in Menzo Baranzan, and she knows who Dritz is, so don't fuck with her. She is wearing a cloak of protection plus two, a shadowed robe, which gives her 15, plus 15% 15 magic resistance. She has on braces, armor class six. They really don't do anything, but she likes them because they're cool and they fill up an inventory slot. She also has a ring of wizardry. Uh, and she is wielding a mage dagger plus four, which gives her an extra spell in first, second, and third. Also gives her plus three saber spells and another 15 magical resistance. And she just found this robe in a nearby room. So, anyways, that is the party now. Um, as you can see, Ronstock is now lawful evil. Lug Lug is neutral evil for this game. He's whatever he wants to be. That's why I made him neutral evil. Uh, not twat kumquat is a chaotic evil gnome. Contagion the cleric is a lawful evil human. Juju Bum Bum is a true neutral human. All druids have to be true neutral. He's the only non-evil character, but that's okay. And Black Lotus is a chaotic evil elf female. So without further ado, with... my friends, 20 minutes into the video, let's command. start Trials of the Lure Master. I am on it. Ah, there you are. I was beginning to wonder if I had the right place. Hail, well met and all that rubbish. The name's Double Toes. Hobart Double Toes. And unless I'm mistaken, you must be the legendary heroes of Icewind Dale, yes? <laughs> I am no hero, little man. However, if you are in need of a villain, I am at your service. Ah, a bunch of pony apples and goblin wine. Call yourself whatever you want. I'm looking for people of extraordinary wits and resolve. Fine, we're heroes. Why is this so important to you? There's a ruined castle I know of not far from here. Men whisper the great treasure waits inside, guarded by fell beasts and devious traps. All who have entered have, well, they died. Ah, it's a very original story, friend. I suppose it's haunted, too. <laughs> Think you're so smart, do you? Well, there's a reason you always hear stories like this. Because they're true! People say the castle just... sucks people right in. They never come out again. Where is this castle? Ah, uh, I can't tell you. I can show you, though. Listen, if you come with me, you can see for yourself. Make some money, save a few people from an awful fate... Maybe some washed-up bard will write a petty song about it. What do you say? Sorry, not interested. Ah, you're useless. Find me some real heroes and there might be some gold in it for you. Fuck off. Alright, before I take off, I'm going to... rouse Ronstock from his slumber and get him some stuff. He has absolutely nothing. Maybe we should just travel to that land with nothing. No, we need to go buy him something. My sword is yours. Mm -hmm. Just say the word. Ready and willing. Aye. Aye. Now since I had to start a new expansion game, the whole map is black again. I should have gave myself my gold. I had like a hundred thousand gold at the end of the last game, so I might have to give myself my gold back. Because I can't buy shit. Yes. Let me do that real quick. So I can buy these weapons, and I'll be right back. I should at least have my gold. I never wrote in the story that I gave up my gold. Fuck that! Alright, we're back just like that. Aye. I checked from the last game. I, I did indeed ready. have... Duty Lots more money. And we don't want to go butt naked into the next adventure. So we're going to buy this sword. Better get that shit while I'm here. Uh, 
uh, that should be good. I don't know if anyone can use this ring. Probably not. I probably just wasted my fucking money. There we go. Alright, scrolls are for you. Potions are for the cleric and gems are for the thief. Alright. Let's say my we're good. Is, I am on it. Let's do the damn thing. Ronstock the Ravager and Party. Lug Lug 2, don't forget me! Lug Lug want to lead? Haha, huh? <laughs> Lug in front now! Lug Lug lead party. No, you don't, Lug Lug. Get the fuck behind yes. me. I shall lead us to just say the word. Duty calls. Duty calls. Alright, take us to this castle. Whoa! Don't trust magic. Ah, see, I told you it wasn't far. <laughs> now, eh, tomorrow, stinking luck to you and all of that. What? Where in Faerun are we? We're in Anorak. It's a desert. There you go. Happy? Now get on with the heroics. I need to rest these old bones. What have you done, Hobart? Ah, you wanted to come here, right? You accepted the challenge, yes? Well, here it is. Enjoy! Wait. Ah! Or quit! What the fuck? Your desire. Now, as you can see, I've done all the memorization for spells here. I don't think I rested, though. Oh, yes. Cool. It counted. I'm already getting surrounded, so let's start launching shit. I... Yes. Now, since we have an evil cleric, all of his heavy-hitting heal spells actually are harm spells now. frozen or something. Half my party doing. I wait. I am ready. To this doesn't start not too well. At your service. I'm here. Everyone's got like hopelessness on them. Um, oh, fuck. Yes, I'm here. What? I need ah. ah. Hey, you need me?
<laughs> what the fuck is going on, dude? This is so fucking cheap. Ready to work. New problem. Okay, yeah, everyone's all of a sudden held. Whatever, man, this is fucking stupid. Okay, good as good. I don't remember this being fucking cheap. Let's try that again, shall we? You can count on me. Pretty strange, all my fighters uh, failed their saving throw at level fucking 18. Fucking guys are done. What the fuck is difficulty is this shit on, dude? What the fuck? Oh, bullshit. Got a new strategy and I'll be back in the next video hopefully not dying <laughs>